By week number two, as I was walking up the stairs, my foster father started pinching my butt. By week number four, my foster mother, in an effort to teach me how to be strong, she thought it would be a great idea to punch me in the face because she said she wanted when I, a woman to learn strength. And so I needed to hear it. So the first boy who told me that he thought that I was beautiful, I believed him. And I jumped on it, and instantly I fell in love. And I'm sure that a lot of you that have dealt with adolescents, you see it, especially these foster kids that have not experienced that feeling that they needed early on, so thankfully you're there to do that. That feeling early on, you see them immediately cling to anything that feels great, because there's opportunity. So she translated what I was saying to him. And by the grace of God, he said, I'll give you one chance, but I'm gonna give you 24 hours to find a place to live for you and your son. <coughs> now me, teen mom, not having any money, I'm like, oh, okay, uh, 24 hours to find a place. stared at that car for a couple of days. And all of these ideas were going around in my head and these thoughts. And these thoughts were, on one hand, well, you're not worthy to be a model. You're certainly not beautiful. I mean, you were raped, you were abused, you're a hot mess. If they really knew all the stuff that you went through, they would never have offered you a modeling contract. But on the other hand, I was just like, well, what do I have to lose? I have my son here, I I'm living in a shelter, I'm coming up on the end of having to move out, and what do I have to lose? So I went with this side, and I sat with this side. And so I went to the agency, yeah, like, I decided that I was going to rise, that I was going to get up out of that hospital bed, not just for my children, but for myself, that I deserved to get up. I wasn't really sure how my life was going to go after that. I wasn't really sure how I was going to heal, but I knew that I had to. Because the other side of it, I was going to die. And if it wasn't in the physical, I was going to be mentally dead, and what a wasted life. So I got out of that hospital bed, and it was very dark. It was very dark because now I had to heal and I had to deal with things that were swept under the rug for so many years. There is a quote, and the quote is, it is better to heal, it is better, excuse me, to deal with issues before they deal with you, and they will. You can sweep them under the rug as long as you want, but they will catch up with you. And all of my issues, all the unresolved trauma that I hadn't dealt with, it caught up with me. And I had to take about a year, two years, to really reflect and go super deep as to why was I this way? Why? And I started to do research because I knew the stuff that had happened to me. I knew the trauma that I had gone through, but I wanted to know like, why mentally like this? Why can't I break free? Had I not been obedient and gone back and forgiven him, then he just would have died and I would have never had that opportunity. So if you have the opportunity to go back and forgive, forgive him. Because unforgiveness is like this. You drink poison, but you expect the other person to die. And it will kill you mentally and physically eventually. So I was so grateful that I had that opportunity. Byron, let's keep on being the hope in these children's lives. Thank you.